Okay, so let's get started with our fill in the bank, fill in the blank question examples. I'm going to go through a few examples of the fill in the blank question to make sure that you understand how to do this for the IELTS reading comprehension. Um, as we know, uh, with the fill in the blank question, the questions go in order. So it's very important for us to first look at the questions and decide which ones are going to be the fastest for us to do first, which ones are going to be the easiest to find. Because once we have our starting point or starting points, we'll know where the other questions are in terms of being able to locate them. So that's the first thing we want to try to do. But in terms of strategy, we have to look at the, we have to look at the question, then we have to look at the keywords in the question, and after we find the keywords in the question, we have to scan and locate the sentence that have, has those keywords. Um, and because that's the sentence that the question is based on. And then we read that sentence and we'll be able to locate which, which word goes on the blank line, word or words go on the blank line. And we have to keep in mind that our answer is going to connect to the words that come before or after the blank line. So um, this question is fairly straightforward, but I'm going to go through several different examples and show you how to do it. So here is example number one that we're going to go through uh, right now. All right, so we're looking at, and this comes from the uh, Cambridge IELTS Book 10, uh, Test 2, Reading Passage 2. Um, I encourage you to buy the books for the Cambridge IELTS Book uh, 10, uh, Cambridge IELTS Book 9, and also uh, the uh, official IELTS practice test. There were eight of them that come in a set from 2014. And um, I encourage you to, um, to buy them so that you'll be able to practice and follow along with us. Um, but that's what we're using for our practice, our teaching this class. So I encourage you to buy those books and to practice along. But here we go. So we are to have a reading passage about gifted children and learning. You don't need to read the passage in advance. It's not necessary to do that. Some people will say, well, look at the topic sentences of the paragraphs and do, yeah, it's a waste of time. It's not necessary to do that. Um, if you know which questions to go in order, that's going to give you all the gu guidance you need to be able to move quickly through a reading passage. That's what you have to do. You have to move through it quickly and efficiently. That's very, very important that you're able to do that quickly and efficiently. All right. So let's go ahead and why don't we, um, let's move it, let's move it up to, uh, this, this is big enough. This will be fine. We have we have it big enough now. All right. So let's move down. And I think that's better before. Yeah, it's better before. That just reduces it too much. All right. Let's go down to our first set of questions. All right, and here we go. We have question 23, 24, 25, and 26. So when we look at these questions, let's look at which ones are gonna be the easiest to do first. All right, so I would definitely say the number 23. When we look at number 23, it says, what one study found a strong connection between children's IQ and the availability of blank and blank at home. Uh, the key words in number 23 that are gonna help us a lot are children's IQ and also study, children's IQ and study, and also the word home. Those are our key words from the question. Um, and we were talking about, of course, nouns and verbs, which are key words. Um, and then for the rest of them is pretty much almost the same. Number 25 also might be easy to find um, because number 25 has the word metacognition. Um, and that word is going to be very easy to locate also the word metacognition. Um, so the easiest ones to probably find here are number 23 and number 25. If we know where those two are, then we'll be able to then locate um, number 24 and 26 uh, a little bit easier. Um, but these questions go in order. So let's first try to find number 23 first and look for a sentence that has the keywords of children's IQ and home and, d and discussing a connection. So let's look for that first and see if we can we can find that find that first. 
I'm gonna make it big enough for you guys to be able to see well. Okay. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm scanning down. I see a lot of word, I see a lot of IQ. IQ, um, in this sentence, I see children and I see IQ, but I don't see anything about children and IQ. I'm still looking for a sentence to deal with children and IQ and home. All right. All right, so. I think we found our sentence right here. All right, this sentence right here would be our keyword sentence right here. All right, because this sentence is dealing with uh, children's IQ scores. All right, here we have our keywords right together, children's IQ. All right, children's IQ. Um, and this is exactly how it appears in the question with children's IQ. So this is our keyword sentence. So when we talk about our keyword sentence, I'm talking about this sentence that stretches from uh, the sentence that stretches uh, from the where it says the higher the children's IQ scores, especially over IQ 130, the better the quality of their educational backup measured in terms of reported verbal interactions with their parents, the number of books and activities in there. There's our word home, right? We have children's IQ Q scores and the word home. So we're looking for the, the words that connect to the word home. And our answer will be books and activities, right? If we look back at it, the question, right? Children's IQ, home, the words, we have to have two words that are connected to the word home. So the answer for number 23 will be books and activities, books and activities, because those are the two words that are directly connected to the word home books and activities directly connected to the word home so that's our answer that's the answer number 23 okay so now let's move on and see if we can find number uh 25. all right let's go to the question Here's number 20, 25. Metacognition involves children understanding their own learning strategies as well as developing. So we have to find our keyword sentence dealing with metacognition and children's understanding and learning. Those are our keywords. Metacognition, children understanding, and learning. And we know our answer is going to connect to a word that is uh, relate that is a synonym or, or direct or direct copy of the word of developing, but it's probably going to be a synonym. So let's look for that sentence. All right, so. I'm scanning down after our previous sentence because it goes in order. So I know I know it's going to come after this sentence right here that talks about that. All right, so here's our here's our sentence right here. Uh, here's the word metacognition. Here's the word children. Here's the word learned. So this sentence right here, the starting with the words emotional awareness. This is our uh, sentence that we need to be looking at in terms of uh, what is developed. So our sentence says, emotional awareness is also part of metacognition. So children should be helped to be aware of their feelings around the area to be learned. Feelings of curiosity or confidence, for example. Emotional awareness is also a part of metacognition. All right, so when we look at our question for number 25, all 
Metacognition involves children understanding their own learning strategies as well as developing answer here the goals is emotional awareness. All right, emotional awareness is what would go here on this sentence. Because it says emotional awareness is also a part of metacognition. All right, emotional awareness is also a part of, of metacognition. So our answer for number 25 is metacognition involves children understanding their own learning strategies as well as developing their emotional awareness. All right, now we know where number 23 is and we know where number 24 is. So now for number, I mean, we know where 23 is, we know where number 25 is. So finding number 24 is actually going to be really easy because number 24 has to come from a sentence that is found in between number 23 and, and number 25. So let's have a look and see if we can find that. So our keywords are 24. Children of average ability seem to need more direction from teachers because they do not have. All right, so what don't they have? All right, children of average ability seem to be seem to need more direction from teachers. Keywords here are uh, children of average ability and also teachers. And our answer is going to connect to words related to what they do not have. Our answer has to connect to something they do not have. But we're going to use the word teachers and children and average ability to locate our sentence. So I know where to look. All right, I know where to look because here's emotional awareness and up here is our other sentence that we use for number 23. Down here for emotional awareness, awareness is where we, use, where we look for number 25 and found it. So that means that our answer is going to be in between here. So we're looking for a sentence talking about teachers and um, teachers. And so you're, you're, if you're looking at this with me, um, in, in your in your own book, um, then you can try to look for it with me, and we're scanning for this sentence that's talking about teachers. Uh, here we go. Here's our sentence thought with average ability. There it is right there, average ability and the word teachers. So that's our sentence, and as we can see. It's exactly how I told you what happened. It go the questions go in order. Number twenty four is after number twenty three. Number twenty five is after number twenty four. All right, so we're looking for something that they don't have in this sentence. There's going to be language that's related to the words "do not have," and that's going to be our answer choice. So it says there appears to be a qualitative difference in the way the intellectual, intellectual, highly able think compared with more average ability or older pupils for whom external regulation by the teacher often compensates for lack of internal regulation so our answer is internal regulation because the words lack are this lack of is the same as do not have right lack of is do not have we know our answer has to connect to do not have so that means that our answer is internal regulation. See how it works, right? You find your sentence and then you find the language. You find the language that is connected to the answer choice in that sentence in the passage. And you always know what the answer is, right? And that's how you're able to move through it very quickly without, without much effort. Let's look at our last question. Uh, question number 26 and um, if you're if you're looking at it with me like I said you can scan with me because scanning is, is is really an exercise that you want to be able to work on you have to work on your ability to scan all right you have to you have to have to have to work on your ability to scan and locate sentences that is probably the number one skill you have to be good at doing when it comes to reading comprehension is scanning all right so Number 26, it says, teachers who rely on what is known as blank often produce sets of impressive grades in class tests. So, key words in number 26 that I'm looking for, teachers, impressive grades, and class test. Teachers, grades, class, teachers, grades, class test. 
Our answer is going to connect to known as. Our answer will connect to known as. So first we find our sentence, and then once we find our sentence, we look for the language that's connected to, that, to those words before the blank line, and that will always point us to the answer choice. All right, so let's take a look at that. Teachers, grades, class sets. I know it comes after number 25. All right, so 25 is what was right here with emotional awareness. So there's nothing about teachers here. Keep going down. There's instructor, but there's nothing about grades or tests. Um, let's keep going down. All right, here we go. All right, so here we have an example of a combination, okay? We have an example of a combination, all right? And when I say combination, I'm talking about, we're starting right here. We're gonna start right here where we see, uh, conversely in the word teachers, I'm going to start there, but we have this sentence, but also we have this next sentence right here where it says extremely high examination results. So here we have what happened here is a situation that happens sometimes in reading comprehension where they'll take two sentences from a paragraph and combine them into one sentence, one compound sentence, one complex sentence, or one long simple sentence, but they'll combine, they'll combine two sentences into one sentence for a question. But when you look at the passage, it's broken up into two sentences. So here we have that situation. Um, extremely high examination results. All right, conversely, teachers who have a tendency to over-direct can diminish their gifted pupils' learning autonomy. Although spoon feeding can produce extremely high examination results, these are not always followed by equally impressive life, su life successes. All right, so um, look back at the question. Oh, the answer is spoon feeding. Because it says here, off can often produce a sets of impressive grades. All right, so what can produce, like I said, the language will come, will connect to what's before or after the blank line. So here, whatever this is, will produce sets of impressive grades in class, whatever it is. So when we look here, it says spoon feeding can produce extremely high examination results. So our correct answer is spoon feeding. Spoon feeding is what will produce those results. Okay, so this is an example of the fill in the blank question. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to go through another example so I can uh, kind of tell you how it's done in terms of uh, just going over it with you again so make sure that you understand how to do this fill in the blank question for the IELTS exam. So um, I'll talk to you soon and if you have any questions about anything be sure to uh, send me a message and I'll be happy to answer it for you. So thanks a lot and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon with another example.